I feel like I should be doing that. I've done that at least 10,000 times. Hi, my name is Carrie Wagner, and I'm here to talk to you today about putting positive messages in the world. Now, a lot of you will wake up in the morning, turn on the TV, your computer, maybe scroll through your phone, or if you're old school like me, open up a newspaper and check out what's been going on in the world around us. Sometimes those headlines are comical, like politics lately, but then other times it may be sad, frustrating, or even frightening. And there are those days where we feel like there's a lot more bad things happening in the world than there are good. That happened to me in April of 2013. I was standing in my kitchen watching the Boston Marathon when two bombs exploded. In that moment, I watched faces turn from joy and happiness to fear and confusion. I was angry. I was sad. I was tired by the senseless violence. See, atrocious acts are no stranger to me. I was a reporter for many years, and I covered murders, natural disasters, stories that would make your stomach turn and keep you up at night. But also, at the same time, I saw the most amazing people that were running into dangerous situations to help someone, who were giving their clothes off of their back or opening up their doors to strangers. And there were so many more of those people than the handful of people that were doing something bad. And I wanted to show that. Now, for many years, I've been inspired by a quote that's probably very familiar to you. It's by Margaret Mead, and it says, Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And if you look throughout history, that's true. It's been one person or a small group of people with an idea, with a passion, who went out and engaged people and made change in the world, either good or bad. It could be for equality, independence, or even just acts of compassion, that they follow what was true to them. So with their inspiration, I wanted to create a giant symbol of our compassion, resilience, and unity as a country. And I knew that I would need help. So I called up six moms that I knew, and I told them about my plan with the goal of delivering these messages to the city of Boston on the one-year anniversary. And immediately they said yes. So the first thing we did was we started ordering giant canvases, which you see on the stage here. They're six feet by 18 feet. And if you could imagine hundreds of these put together, you can kind of get a sense of the scale. Then we started engaging people. We wanted our project to be simple. We wanted everyone to be able to be involved. So we made it free. And we made it to anyone at any age could participate, from age 2 to 102, regardless of your ability level. We started, like I said, engaging people. We talked to friends and families and churches and schools. And then it took off. When the bombs went off, I was fatigued by the violence. And I thought, this has got to change. The prayer canvas is designed for the victims and the survivors of the Boston bombings. But I think it's truly symbolic that we still care about one another. Everybody has a gift or a way that they can let somebody know, I'm thinking of you, I care. Well, it started as a small gesture of support and has snowballed into a nationwide movement. The prayer canvas is going across the country collecting messages for the victims. So far, it's visited 25 states. The past several months, they have traveled around the country to collect signatures and paintings, all on canvases. Canvases with well wishes are being signed, and all 50 states will be presented. 200 kids in kindergarten through the sixth grade spent their summer working on it. And here is their handiwork. Sacramento Fire Chief Ray Jones says even if the event happened miles away, it's important to show your support. What it does, it, it brings solidarity. It brings our communities all together, and we don't seem like such a large country anymore. It might seem tough right now. You'll get through somehow. Remember that the race you run shapes who you become. Wipe your tears away, it'll be okay. Keep moving on, this is not the end, the sun will rise again. Keep moving on. You read these messages.
messages and, and they're so heartfelt, it really does uh, get you right to the core. Seeing this giant symbolic gesture put together by people from all walks of life, all around the country, showing that they care. We stand together as a country and we are compassionate and we are tolerant and we want good things for people. I will catch your fall. Remember you are not alone. Hope will take you home. Wipe your tears away, it'll be okay. Keep moving on, this is not the end. The sun will rise again. Keep moving on. Shapes who you become. Remember, you are not alone. Hope will take you home. Wipe your tears away, it'll be okay. Keep moving on, this is not the end. The sun will rise again. Keep Boston is in my prayers because they are. Keep moving on. Keep moving on. The canvas itself had innovative consequences, things we hadn't anticipated when we started the project. First, it was a physical way of bringing well wishes to those in need on a massive scale. So imagine, they could actually see the enormity of people who were thinking and praying for them. It also became a symbol of hope, not only for Boston, but for the world. I remember being in California and there was a woman signing and she looked up at me with tears in her eyes and she said, I so needed this today. I needed to know that there were still good people out there in the world. And then, when we were in Oklahoma, a family who'd lost everything in a tornado said, you know, what happened to us? Well, that was Mother Nature, and there's nothing you can do about that. But what happened in Boston was man-made, and maybe if we put more positive messages in the world like this, it would change that course of hate in the future. It created an ability to interact with these messages. Once we arrived in Boston on the one-year anniversary, we spread out all the canvases in the Boston Common, which is in the center of the city. And people could walk amongst it like an emotional labyrinth. Some would kneel and pray, others would cry, some would run through joyfully looking for their home state, many taking pictures, but everyone would come hours after hours, late into the night with flashlights if they worked late, and every time they ask us to take the canvas up, they would petition the city for us to put it back down. It was a historical record, and continues to be, of people's thoughts and feelings after a terrorist attack. So we started this project the day after the bombing, and we continued and traveled the entire country for one year. So we were able to record what people were thinking and feeling at any age across our country. And it was an emotional outlet. This was key. So many people that we came across wanted to do something, they just didn't know what. And as we got closer and closer to Boston, the city would request more and more canvases for schools to participate in, first responders, medical staff. Everyone wanted to record what they were thinking, a story, or maybe what their experience was that day. Once we arrived in Boston, it was the size of a football field. And I know in the video it said 100,000 messages. Well, it grew to more than 250,000 messages from around the world. 
people would come from all over, and we had to continue bringing canvases out on a table, and people would sign six people deep. We would have Christians, Muslims, Jews, Sikhs, people from all different countries signing at the same time, and for that day, putting apart any differences they had because they all had the commonality of they wanted peace, love, and harmony. We had people that had different experiences as they went through the canvases. Each canvas is unique with its own story. We even had those who would come day after day. Like these little kids here, they came on one day, they went home and they made their own canvas and they brought it back the next day, so we added it to our display. This is the Boston Medical Center staff, and they invited us there because one, they wanted to read all the messages outside the city, how people were viewing what had happened. But then they also wanted to create their own canvas so they could talk about what happened that day for them. Now keep in mind, these are the people who saw the bombing victims coming in, all torn up, the mass confusion, the crying, the terror, the shrieking. They didn't want to talk about that. They wanted to tell us the heroic stories of the people who were strangers, and they're driving along and they're picking up people and bringing them to the hospital because all the ambulances are full. Taking the shirt off their back to make a tourniquet to help save someone's life. This canvas out of Kentucky was the last project an art teacher did with his students before he passed away. This is another one from Washington State, and the kids there wanted to create a flag using their handprints, and every time they would lay their hand on the canvas, they would say a sweet little prayer. And just hearing their unfiltered words were enough to just raise your day. The canvas worked for lots of different reasons. We were able to engage America, and America adopted the project. We had people we didn't know taking canvases on and on and spreading the message. We weren't a formal entity. We weren't an organization. We were just seven moms from Florida, but we wound up on Capitol Hill. We wound up on the finish line on the one-year anniversary with the victims and their families and the survivors, and they created their own canvas, which was a thank you banner as a way to thank the world for the support that they've received. It was a simple idea, and we all have that gift. Some of us, it might be in public relations, which that helped us enormously. It might be in organizing things, volunteer hours, which we had people volunteering in 100 degree weather, splitting open their thumbs, nailing down the canvases so they wouldn't blow away. We had people opening up their homes or vacating their office sta office, offices so we could go in and take our canvases when they had been rained on and they could dry out. It was amazing how people came together, but we can do that every day. You could smile a little bit more. You can maybe make a goal of hugging three people that day. Maybe give five compliments. But if we start filling the world with more positive thoughts, we don't have as much room for hate. And I do know this. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. So we can throw up our hands and shake our heads and sigh and talk about how horrible a story that just happened in the news. Or we can actually do something to change that. And it doesn't have to be complicated. Which brings me back to the very first canvas that we did. My daughter, who is in the third grade now here at CDS, completed the first square. And she drew a rainbow. And I asked her, why did you do a rainbow? And she said, well, that's what happens after a storm. And you know everything will be OK. So in the end, I thought, this is what we had created for Boston and the rest of the world, is a rainbow. Bad things are going to happen. But if we come together and don't let us tear us apart, we can make something beautiful and everything will be okay. And I leave you with one final thought. When I was standing in the common, surrounded by thousands of messages from people from all over the world, the media would come up and they would inter interview me. The common question that they asked was, did you ever think it would get this big? And my answer was yes. I believe in human kindness. Thank you.